Imagine standing where the Hudson River once flowed freely, staring up at skyscrapers that pierce the clouds. You're surrounded by landmarks like the World Trade Center complex and Battery Park City, yet none of this land is real. Before they started building, it was mostly water. So how did they build it? And what did the original shoreline look like? In the 17th century, Manhattan's original shoreline hugged the financial district, and everything beyond was water. Dutch settlers built New Amsterdam on the southern tip of the island, but they quickly realized they needed more land. So they extended their waterfront properties by filling in shallow areas with whatever was available, rocks, dirt, wood, and even sunken ships. And the result was kind of crazy. A new shoreline emerged. That's why Water Street has its name, because it was literally at the water's edge before they started expanding. But even this early expansion wasn't enough. As the centuries went on and the city grew, so did the need for more space. Enter the concept of water lots, a scheme that allowed landowners to buy the right to fill in and develop areas beyond the existing shoreline. By the early 19th century, Manhattan's shoreline was crawling with coal ash and construction debris as landowners were desperate to expand their properties into the Hudson and East Rivers. They filled their water lots with rocks, soil, and anything else they could get their hands on, extending their land inch by inch. The Dongan Charter of 1686 legalized this practice, leading to the creation of makeshift piers and docks. Heavy rocks and cement stabilized the landfill, while caissons, watertight retaining structures, were used to build solid foundations. The result? A hodgepodge of debris compacted over time to form a somewhat solid base for New York's rapidly expanding skyline. Fast forward to the 20th century. By now, the original footprint of Lower Manhattan had expanded by nearly 1,000 feet in some places, and it was about to grow even more. The construction of the original World Trade Center in the 1960s created a surplus of dirt and rock. This debris was used to build Battery Park City, a new neighborhood on the west side of Manhattan that stands on what was once part of the Hudson River. Over 1.2 million cubic yards of rock and soil excavated from the original World Trade Center were used to extend the shoreline by up to 700 feet, creating a new residential neighborhood on the western edge of Lower Manhattan. To support skyscrapers on this reclaimed land, engineers drove steel and cement pile foundations deep into the bedrock below, reaching depths of up to 80 feet. Yet even with modern techniques like multi-level flood barriers, wetlands, and reinforced seawalls, the city remains vulnerable. So as the sea levels rise and storm surges grow stronger, one has to wonder, is Lower Manhattan poised to sink under its own weight? When Hurricane Sandy hit in 2012, water rushed into the financial district and caused billions of dollars in damage. Battery Park City was submerged and the World Trade Center site flooded. In response, the city launched the Lower Manhattan Coastal Resiliency LMCR project to protect this valuable land from future storms. It includes building multi-level flood barriers and extending the shoreline with wetlands and marshlands to absorb the impact of storms. Mayor de Blasio proposed extending the shoreline of Lower Manhattan by up to 500 feet into the East River. The idea was to protect the financial district and seaport areas from storm surges and rising sea levels. This plan, estimated at $10 billion, would add acres of new real estate and provide a buffer against the next Hurricane Sandy. The details of the plan include constructing a series of barriers and levees that would not only hold back floodwaters, but also serve as foundations for new commercial and residential buildings, parks, and public spaces. But this isn't the only vision for Manhattan's future. A few years ago, Jason Barr, an economics professor at Rutgers, proposed a plan he called New Manhattan. It's a one 760-acre expansion that would extend the island further into New York Harbor, incorporating Governor's Island and creating new neighborhoods with wetland parks to combat climate change. It would generate more housing 
than the Upper West Side and create an estimated $250 billion in property value. The project's ambitious nature leads some New Yorkers to view it as a pie-in-the-sky idea rather than a practical solution. The project would cost over $34 billion to build and probably a few decades to complete. In the meantime, the problem remains. Some areas of Lower Manhattan are sinking. Even with all the advanced engineering techniques, parts of the land reclaimed from the water continue to settle slowly. The World Trade Center complex alone is estimated to sink at a rate of 1.8 millimeters per year. With the current housing crisis and risk of floods, it makes you wonder whether the vision for New Manhattan should be revived. Hey guys, this is Nick from The Curious New Yorker, and from the bottom of my heart, thank you for watching.